Hey everybody, Sheriff Stephen J here, and I finally made it to the Bryant Stove Works. And this place is a very unique place owned by Joe and B. Bryant. And it's unique because they not only sell antique stoves that they refurbish that are one to two hundred years old, but they also have a museum. And in this museum are all kinds of antiques, especially not only cars and that type of thing, but musical antiques. And I'm talking about player pianos and uh, Nickelodeons and that type of thing. But if that isn't enough, they have a room they call the Doll Circus. And there's a reason they call it that. So, why don't you join me and have a little chat with Joe and B. Bryant. You're going to like this. I can see what you mean. Okay. Hey! Hi. How you guys doing? Just fine, thank hey. you. Hey! Oh, man, my feet are killing me. It's a long walk over here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, I've been telling everybody about your place. Thank you. I thought I, you're welcome. I thought I'd tell people about it. And, and, you know, I was here a while back. Joe took me through the museum. And uh, so I thought we could talk about it a little bit. Okay. So we're in the Bryant Stove Works place. Yes. Where you sell all these antique stoves. Yes, and to museums. The last one I just sold was to the Henry Ford Museum. And eight, the stove was 1810. But we've had some in the late 1700s. You got some beautiful pieces out there. Mm -hmm. they're, they're absolutely gorgeous. Wood stoves and gas stoves and and you also have those salesman stoves, you know. Uh, I don't sell those usually. But so so they were my collection. Yeah, okay. And those are those small ones like this. This the, and they're toys. Yeah. Salesman right. and toys. That's right. Yes. But they were cast iron and those are some nice workable. pieces. Workable. Yes, workable stoves. Workable stoves. We sell stoves to museums, and um, do you ever go into Cracker Barrel to eat? Uh, I had a contract with Cracker Barrel to furnish one stove to every gift shop. There was yeah. one, that, a great big one, a brick set that was used in the movie, Abraham Lincoln's movie. The life of really? Abraham Lincoln in a year, what was it, two, a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. We had two stoves in that movie, and one of them is on the floor out there. I got a one room with a load of stoves in it, it was made 14 years before Abraham Lincoln was president. I saw stoves in the museum, uh, 1844. Yes, and I have another room full of them. But anyways, the stoves out here are absolutely fantastic. And I'm kind of curious, does anybody ever walk in here and they see all the stoves and all of a sudden they see a room full of dolls? And they go, what's this all about? The doll is our, our hobby. We went to Florida in the winters. We started doing flea markets and yard sales. And we bought what we could use in our museum, a doll room. And he got it so it would move. Different things that he thought would move nicely. How long, Joe, have you been into making things move? All his life. All his life! Well, All his life. Basically, I guess, right? Yes, even when he was well, young. Well, I've played all my life, and that's what I do when I'm playing. So what gave you the idea for the doll circus? That just occurred, just happened. Actually, I was making a horse for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, we could make that in the carousels. So I ended up making enough horses, and he put it with bicycle wheels, he put it in motion. I made enough horses for the whole carousel. And that's how it started. And that room, that whole room, is pretty much what he did while he's so down there. So it filled up and filled up. And I yes. know you have a lot of dolls, like celebrities are in there. Yes. And they're lo we're watching the circus go on. Yes. Now, you know, when I initially went into the doll room, I looked at all the stuff. I saw like the, the puppets that walk in a circle. Like, yes, yeah. Anyway, they're there. I just thought it was your doll collection, right? And then Joe came in the room when I was in there and he pushed a button.
I was so amazed when he came in there and he pushed that button and I kind of jumped when everything came to life. But then after it was all over, um, there is a little alcove off this room and it connects that room to their museum. And it's called the Henry Stark Room. And why is that room called the Henry Stark Room? Well, because he was the man that made the, most, of the, most of the stuff in it. On both stuff, on both sides move. All of that stuff in that room is run by steam. Well, really? it's not steam, it's actually air, but it's... We're doing air with them now. But when they, they, These are duplicates of what was made in the periods of time. I see. And there's also, in one side of the room, there's um, uh, a machine shop. And then there's farm equipment, the, the tractors. On the other side. On the other side. And there's also household things like the sewing machine and washing machine. So how does the, if the left side runs on air, what runs the right side? Well, electricity. Electricity. So you have, oh, say, so you have them all plugged in then. But all the engines run. Yes. They have both sides. Yeah. Boy, everything runs in this place, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, okay, so we go through the alcove and now we're in the museum. Right. Okay. And I noticed there is a, with the Charlie horse, when you first walk in. Yep. A friend of mine had the old horse and he was all depleted and uh, somebody scraped the paint all off him and he was coming apart. We got him all made, and then I said, what are we going to call him? And somebody said, tell you. I said, well, that was uh, He's an 1888 jumper. He was used in a, in wow. a, in a merry-go-round. Did you and have a ride? I didn't have a ride. You could ride him? Yes, you well, could ride Joe him. Well, Joe turned him on. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I even like there's old ladies come in, and Dad gives them a ride on Charlie Horse. Yeah. Well, I turn on the switch. Yes. <laughs> you got Model A's in there, and I love Model A's. And um, the one, the one car what was that one a brush, yeah. a brush, one cylinder brush. Yeah, that was the first car in the town of Hodgeton, Maine. The very first car that was in that town. That is a really neat car. Very, very unique looking. And then there's one that was in front of it that was very unique as well. Like at the Model T right there. So the one we had in Florida, and the one that was in the movie. And there is a, a friction drive Mets. It was a neat car. We we love the antique cars. We took drove, we used to have them licensed and take them out. I mean, they're all kind of cars. There's a blue one there, a little pretty blue one. Well, it was a Dodge. That was his grandfather's remains of his grandfather's. What? They were Dodge. <laughs> Was a calliope, and they used the calliope in town to announce that the circus was coming. They rode through town. It's a loud machine that you can hear it way off in the distance. <laughs> here when we first walked in got the Charlie horse yeah and then we went down that top aisle oh there, there is a um, player organ, organ yeah there's a yeah yeah a player that plays and it does the music automatically right yes. okay and that works pretty good <laughs> Thank you. 
has a wooden fingers on it, but you really couldn't see the fingers. Well, that is is the push up. That's a push player. up. He pumped it. It's yes. a push up piano player. 1902. The forerunner to the player piano. <laughs> The man that's described in that plaque over there was the man that invented this particular type of roll. They had street roll pianos many years, but this one is a particularly nice one. In fact, they always, they referred to it as the hurdy-gurdy. And it has ten different songs on it, and this man bought one. His name was Marino Persicini, and he, he uh, cranked it on the streets of Boston at least 50 years, and maybe more. To change the song, you turn this crank one complete turn, and it pushes the frame away and moves the barrel endways like an eighth of an inch. Now you've got a different song. This is Rock of Ages, and this, instead of having paper rolls, this is a wooden roll and it moves sideways like this. And it's playing, at the end of the song it snaps back and starts, so, so you can start over. Uh. This is a photo player, what's left of it, it's kind of a part right now, but they use these in the silent movies. And this, uh, you have piano rolls, it's like two player pianos made together. And you could play one and then stop and play another one. But they had to have somebody tend it. And up in the top here, each one of those pulleys had ropes that hung down like that, see? And you can see them in the picture here. And what they were for, you could get your music on the roll here and you could also have a, a, another chamber for music that we built in. But these pulleys, these handles, if, I mean the movie's going, the music's going, and the horse comes out and you pull the rope on the horse starting sound. Another one on a gunshot, another one for a doorbell, another one for a car horn. You had 12 different sound effects you could put in. Because they didn't have them built into the system, you know. That's what that boils down to. Well, this is an old player piano I've had for years. And I used, there was a while I used to buy these and well, sometimes they'd give them to you. Completely dismantle them and put them back together, rebuild the whole thing. and and I usually put a power unit on it. Originally you had to pump the uh, pedals to make them work. But I used to, I used to put, you could buy a little vacuum unit to go right on it. This is a vacuum engine. It's what makes the, moves the paper. That one's on, on the vacuum right now from the pump, but you, you had to pump it with your feet to make it go originally. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
catch poker, they all get in the swing. accordion but oh, yeah. inside it has a roll so so somebody can go out on the corner you know like to get tips and they can pretend they're playing but actually it's a machine and inside it's a roller it's a roller they call it a tanza bar is what they called it and it you pump this lever here and it made this flywheel motor go pull this it, it makes the flywheel go and you put that in gear and that pulls the paper down through the reeds up in here. So you didn't have to have any talent. I'm going to have to come back. This place is huge. Yes, we have a button. I collect ending buttons. You're amazing. Well, I am coming back because I love the place. You're um, refurbishing those stoves. are yes. awesome. The museum is incredible. And the doll room is amazing. And we're just two old farmers. Okay, well, I better let you guys go. I'm sure you guys have things to do. Yep. No, rest. <laughs> I did. Now, did I say that? No, I did. Did I say that? I did. What? Well, rest. I said we have to go rest. We thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. Take care. You. Bye, Joe. Uh, have a great nap. We'll see you. you uh, we'll see you next time. I will be back. Okay. All thank right. you. All right, you're welcome. Yeah. Bye bye now. Yeah. yeah. Bye bye. Drive careful now. Thank you. Drive. You fly, do you? Drive. <laughs> ah. So there you have it. Joe and B. Bryant of Bryant Stove Works. And it's a lot more than just stoves here. It was nice of them to let me drop by and talk with me about their place. Yeah, I didn't even know they had a button room. Well, I think I'll do what Joe's about ready to do, or at least he suggested he might be doing, and now that I think about it, it probably isn't a bad idea. Take me a nap. Button room. Never heard of button room.